My goodness. All right. Wasn't that good? Enjoy that. And aren't you glad that he is alive? Here this morning, we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the truth is, when we think about here, Easter Sunday. Now, I like Easter Sunday uh, for a lot of reasons. One, you have breakfast. How many was here for breakfast? All right, a good... If you didn't come, you missed out. I think there's a whole lot of food left over. So warm it up. Have, what would it be, brunch? Huh? That'd be brunch or whatever it might be. Anyway, um, it's good to be back uh, with you. Um, if I have not met you, I hope to do so. My name is David Halcom. I'm the uh, uh, vice president of Heritage Baptist College. I pastored for some 38 years and been in the ministry now, hmm, 56 years. And so I'm going on 49. Uh, Don, would it be all right to um, announce who's going to be speaking next week? Is that all right? I don't want to, if you want to do it, that's fine. Okay. Uh, one of our students... Uh, James Noggle uh, will be preaching next Sunday morning. Uh, he's not a young man. He's 48, I believe. Uh, and his mother, for a good number of years, uh, taught at Tabernacle. And I was talking to these young ladies, and uh, they knew her, and they said she was really tough. Am I right? really hard uh, in school. Well, uh, she and her husband, uh, Jim Henry, I married them, oh, I don't know, what was it, eight years ago, 10 years ago, something like that? I'm not sure. Uh, but he was a missionary and his wife died. He was in Ethiopia and in uh, England and uh, she died. And so it was on a hayride. Don, I think, what is, was it at your place? I think we had a hayride. And I believe that's where they met. And the love bug hit them. And uh, here it was a few months later. I don't know how long later. I was coming back from... Um, Oh, I forget now where it was, and I got a phone call. And it was Jim. And he said, uh, Dr. Halcom, um, Susan and I, we're going to get married. Can you marry us? Well, I said, right now? <laughs> and he said, no, not right now, but will you uh, marry us? And I said, sure, I will be glad to uh, marry you. And so uh, there have been... Uh, happily ever after. Anyway, uh, her son, James Nago, will be here next uh, Sunday, and hopefully sometime I will get back uh, to see you and uh, see how that you are doing, all right? Uh, if you'll turn with me in your Bible this morning, and just, uh, if you don't mind, just keep your Bible open to 1 Corinthians, uh, or if you use your phone. Nowadays, um, these young kids, young, young kids, younger, uh, young people, they like to use their phone. Well, that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. And so 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. Uh, and my thought this morning is this. And I want you to get it into your mind uh, this morning. My thought this morning is this. What if? What if, here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 and verse 13, it says this, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessings on our time this morning. And so uh, it really is good to see each of you here uh, today. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the fact that we can be here on this Easter Sunday morning and celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray now that, you, that we'll just uh, put everything else aside. The meal maybe uh, that we're going to go to afterwards, family coming over, and all of those things, Father. Let us just put those, a thing, those things aside and let us just focus upon the Word of God and what you have for us this morning. And Father, I don't know hearts today, but you do. If there's one here without Christ, never been born again, never been washed in the precious blood of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that this would be the day, this would be the hour that they would just trust you as personal Savior. And then, Father, we that know you, we that are, we that are saved, Father, help us to be drawn nearer and closer to you. And we ask all of these things in your precious name. Amen. What if there was a little old gray-haired man that was looking in the a storefront uh, building in the window there, and he was gazing on the uh, picture of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as he stood there, a little boy came up and was there for a few minutes, and he thought it was his job to explain to this little old man that was poorly dressed, uh, just, uh, just gazing on to this picture of Christ. He thought it was his job to explain to him what that picture was about. And he said, sir, I want you to realize that this picture, uh, this picture uh, is of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're dying on Calvary for mankind. They killed him, and there he is dying. In a moment or two, the little old man walked, walked away, and the few seconds later, uh, that man heard footsteps behind him, and the little boy, it was this little boy, and he was uh, crying out, Mister, Mister, I forgot to tell you, he arose, he arose. Oh, what great thing it is to realize that our Lord Jesus Christ is a rose. I like that song sometimes that we sing, some, most of the time at uh, Easter, is the fact that he, up from the grave, he arose. Now, I, thought, I bet you thought I was going to sing that, didn't you? Huh? But I'm not. Okay, I'll leave that to our our expert over here, not me. But I like the song, Up From the Grave, He Arose. There was never, we must never forget the resurrection. The resurrection and the truth of the resurrection. Now, folks, I want you to realize that we can celebrate the resurrection, not just on Easter Sunday, but we ought to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord every time that we come into the Lord's house. We can celebrate his resurrection. There are two great foundational truths of the gospel. The first one is his crucifixion, the cross. Last Sunday morning, we talked a little bit about the, the cross and the importance of the cross, and then the fact of his resurrection. These two great truths. I read to you here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 again, in the same chapter, in verse 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you once, and uh, I'm sorry, you that are new, I've been having some eye problems, so if I stagger a little bit, 
uh, that's the reason why, okay? For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the, uh, the third day according to the scripture. Thank God for that. This morning, let's in our minds and in our hearts think about what if he did not come forth out of the grave? What if Christ be not risen? Now, Paul tells us that if Christ be not risen, notice what he says there in, for, in verse 14. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain. Our preaching is vain. There is nothing to what I'm doing this morning. There is nothing to uh, the preaching. The whole story, that which we read here, the whole story is a fake. In fact, this church is a fake. For 175 years, if Christ be not risen, this church is a fake. Men such as the Wesley brothers, they were fakes. Men like Billy Sunday, Charles Spurgeon, uh, Dwight L. Mo Moody, they were all fakes. Not only that, I'm a fake this morning if Christ be not risen from the dead. But I do know this, because of the word of God, I know that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Romans chapter one and verse 16 will tell us that. But not only that, Paul says that our faith is in vain. Look at verse 14 and verse 17. And if Christ be not risen, your faith is vain. Your faith is vain. There came a time in my life, in your life, that we placed our faith and our trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we find that our sins were forgiven. I'm here to tell you that if Christ did not come forth out of the grave, if Christ was not risen, then I'm here to tell you this morning that that did not happen. Our sins were not forgiven. And then Paul also tells us uh, that we are false witnesses. We are false witnesses as well. Notice there in verse 15, yea, yes, and we that are found false witnesses of God. We find the Apostle Paul set in a lonely cell, dirty, filthy, rotten cell, and just outside the door of that cell where the Apostle Paul was, outside that door, I am told was the chief sewer now, you know what a sewer is, the filth and the mire. That, that sewer was just outside the door of where the Apostle Paul was. Paul expected to die. Paul expected to die in there and then be thrown out that door into the sewer of there of, that ran through Rome. Let's listen if you would please, to what the Apostle Paul has to say. For I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me uh, at that day. And not to me only, but, to, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Oh, the Apostle Paul. I'm telling you 
a man like the Apostle Paul would not just give his life for a lie, a lie. Well, I see something else here in verse 17. Paul tells us that we are still in our sin. We are still in our sin. When I trusted Christ as my personal Savior, and when you trusted Christ as your personal Savior, we believed that our sins were forgiven. How terrible it would be. How terrible it would be to wake up some morning and to find out that our sins were not forgiven, that we, were, that we are still lost. Here, I've been a Christian now 62 years. How terrible it would be to find out all of these years, all of these years, It was all a fate. It was all worthless in what I am doing. Well, listen to what this old black preacher, if I told you this before, I'm sorry, just realize I'm old, okay? And old people repeat things again. <laughs> I, no, I won't tell you that. Okay. But I guess I will. I have a little, there's a little, can't say little old lady anymore. It's elderly lady. I got, I got really uh, <sighs> slam bang for saying little old lady. It's it's elderly lady. But sometimes I go to visit uh, this little lady, and I'm telling you, I know everything about her. <laughs> she tells me the same stories over and over and over again. But that's all right. But here, um, there was a black preacher uh, on a plane, and they were flying over to London. And as they were going uh, uh, across the ocean, there the pilot, for some reason, and uh, no one knows why, except just the Lord did it. There the, the uh, pilot dipped the wing, and, and he said over the microphone system, here is the very deepest part of the ocean. That black preacher got so excited. I mean, he got up and he was walking up and down the aisle saying, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. That's where my sins are. And the truth is that our sins are buried, the Bible says, in the depths of the ocean. And our sins is as far as the east is from the west. Well, then Paul says something else. He says here, uh, that our dead loved ones are perishing in verse 18. Our dead loved ones are perishing. Our loved ones, of course, you know, as older we get and the older they get, they are dying. I buried most of my, I did my parents, their funeral, did a nephew, aunts and uncles, and so forth. And many times as we leave the cemetery, we'll say something like this. We'll see you again. <laughs> we'll see you again on the sunny slopes of glory. We will see you again. Listen, if Christ still is dead, if Christ is not risen, we will never, never see our loved ones again. Now, you like good news? Hmm? Do you? I like good news, don't you? I don't like bad news. I like good news. And the good news is this. I found, find there in verse 20 of our text in chapter 15, the Bible simply tells us this, for Christ is now risen from the dead. Isn't that good news? Here this morning you've come and we're to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the truth is, he's not dead. The truth is, he's not in that tomb. The truth is that he's risen. And we celebrate that day here on this particular Sunday morning. The Bible tells us over 
and over and over again, he arose, he arose, he arose. Now, listen carefully to me. Because he arose, because he's not dead there in a grave, because he arose, we have a living Savior this morning. And I'm here to tell you that it takes a living Savior to reach down into the muck, into the mire of sin and lift us up out of that and redeem us. It takes a living Savior to be able to do just that. Many great men have lived and died. I've been to the tomb of Jefferson Lincoln and all of those presidents. But you know what? They're still there. They're still there. But you go to the tomb of Jesus Christ. I've been there twice. The tomb is about six by eight feet. Perhaps you can get 10, 12, 15 people into that tomb. And there a shelf is built. And there uh, the dead person is placed upon that shelf. But I'm here to tell you, when you go to the tomb of Jesus, he's not there. He's not there. He's not there at all. And I hear the words of the song as we sang a few moments ago. He lives. He lives. And I serve a risen Savior this morning. Oh, I have a living Savior. But not only that, we have a comforter. We have a comforter. Where does one go? Where does one go when one needs help? Where does one go when their heart is so broken? Their life, it just seems, is it's falling apart. Nothing that they can do. Where does one go? I'm telling you this morning that we can go to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can go to that one that says simply to, says to us, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me. Oh, listen, sometimes our heart is troubled. Is that not right? When a loved one dies, a problem comes into our home, we need a comforter. And that one is the Lord Jesus Christ. Back in 95, three months apart, my mother and my dad passed away. My dad, really unexpected. He had gone to the doctor on a Friday, first part of May, on Friday. And the doctor told him, he said, you know, Stan, you need not come uh, every three months and get a checkup. You're doing great. When you get sick, just call us. That was on a Friday. Sunday night, he died of a massive heart attack. My mother died three months later. She got mad at God a little bit. She said, God, you knew Stan could take care of himself, and I can't, and you took him before you took me. Well, mother died about three, it was exactly three months later. I remember I did the funeral of both of them. I did the funeral of my mother when she passed away. And several days later, after the funeral, I left uh, back to Moab, Utah. I flew in and I drove one of the cars back uh, to keep. And my heart was broken. And I guess I was glad to be by myself and... Uh, some 17, 1800 mile trip back to Mobile, Utah. And as I was driving, and I don't know why, uh, gas one, uh, the first day or so, I uh, opened the glove compartment and there was a tape. It was a cassette tape of uh, the instructions for the car and so forth. And, and I didn't have anything else to do. I put it in. But it wasn't that. My dad, for some reason, and I'm sure somebody else had to do it for him, my dad, for whatever reason, had taped over that 
and the person uh, that was speaking was Carl Hurley. Has anybody ever heard of Carl Hurley, the Christian comedian uh, from London, Kentucky, and Corbin, Kentucky? Uh, it's played on, been on all the, uh, the, the talk shows and uh, did, he's still living, did a lot of work up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, down in Branson, Missouri. He didn't tell jokes, he told stories. And he told stories of the southern part of Kentucky and Tennessee. And uh, because of both of my parents from Barberville, Kentucky, in that London and Corbin area, and I connected with the stories. And uh, sometimes I would laugh, I just laugh out loud, and sometimes I would just cry, just cry. And I believe God and his infinite wisdom uh, let me find that tape and gave me some comfort there as I drove by myself back to Moab, Utah. I'm here to tell you, folks, no matter what comes into your life and into my life, he's the God of all comfort. I like that, don't you? He's the God of all comfort into our heart and into our life. Well, not only... Do we have a living Savior this morning? Not only do we have one that will bring comfort to our hearts no matter what, but something else, we have the promise that one day that we will see our loved ones again. We have the promise that one day that we will see our loved ones again. There was a group of people in the Orient and they had the custom is when a loved one died and, and as that loved one was being placed down into the grave and then they would let a flock of birds out of the cage and let them fly over the, uh, the grave site and then fly away. Well, I think about us as we stand at a grave site of a loved one. I think the Holy Spirit sort of speaks to our heart and to our life and simply says that we don't have to sorrow as those that have no hope. We don't need to sorrow as those that have no hope. Yes, I've left the, uh, the little grave sites of my parents and those others that I have buried. And yes, my heart has been broken. There's tears in my eyes. But as I, but as I have left those places, there has been hope. There has been a hope that one day I'm going to see them again. And the truth is, this morning, as I close, that in order to see that loved one again, that one that has been a Christian all their life, in order to see that loved one again, you yourself must be born again. You yourself must know Christ as your personal Savior. This morning, as we close this service, I wonder, do you know Christ? Have you been washed in the precious blood of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know him? Have you asked him to come into your heart and to save you and to forgive you of your sins? If, you, if not, I would encourage you this morning I would encourage you this morning to come and let us take the word of God. Let us take this precious book and let us show you from his word, his word that is truth and that is everlasting and show you from his word this morning that you too can be a child of God. You too can know him as your personal Savior. Shall we stand please? with their heads bowed in prayer. God's people praying. Maybe you're here this morning. You're saved. You know him as personal Savior. But perhaps your life is just not the way it ought to be. And you know that. You know that. You know that your life is not what it ought to be. This morning, why don't you just come here at, at a 
at an altar, at a, at a pew, someplace and just kneel and, and get things right between you and God this morning. How important that is. But if you're here without Christ, oh, I encourage you to come. I encourage you to come and let us take this book and show you from this book that you can know him as your personal savior. You can know him as the pianist is playing right in the quietness of this hour, right in the quietness of this hour. Would you do that? Would you do that? Would you do that? If you can take care of things right where you are, why don't you do that right where you are? Right in that pew, that space, right where you are. Why don't you ask the Lord to help you? I wonder this morning, I wonder this morning, if you're here without Christ, would you just repeat this prayer after me and mean it with all of your heart? Would you do that? Here's the prayer. Here's the prayer. Father, I realize I'm a sinner. I realize I'm lost. I realize I'm, I'm undone. And Father, right now, would you forgive me of my sins? Would you forgive me of my sins and save me for Christ's sake? Now, if you did that and you meant it with all of your heart, I'm here to tell you, that God will save you. God will save you. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not might be, not hope so, but shall be saved. The quietness of, the, of this hour, no one looking around, no one looking around. I wonder, is there anyone? Did you pray that? Would you just slip your hand up and let me know that? Just slip it up high. So that I can see it. I can see it. Our Father, I pray this morning that you'll bless each one that is gathered here today. May this be a glorious day for them. May this be a happy day for them as we can celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad this morning that he's not dead in a tomb there in Jerusalem. But Father, he arose from that tomb and he's alive evermore at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us this morning. Lord, speak to all of our hearts and may we love you with our heart and our soul and our being. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Don, you're sitting right there. I'll turn it over to you, sir. Like you were ready for that.